What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another Throwback Thursday. That's what we like to do on Thursdays. We like to just take a look at different types of properties, different types of deals that we've done, how we acquired them, what happened, why we had it, and then uh, basically what happened on the sales side. So I got the expert here, Randy. He's going to give you the lowdown on what happens when we require that property and that just kind of the dispo side, that sales side. So he does a great job with that. Um, and he definitely did a great job with this deal right here. So it's a, it's a good deal that I want to talk about. I'm excited. I was excited about this deal when we got it, when it came across our plate. Um, but just, it took, it took a lot of work and that's what happens sometimes in wholesaling. Not every deal is easy. Not every deal is as simple as sometimes we think it is. The process is simple, but you got to take a lot of steps. You got to do a lot of things. Um, this one was kind of one that fell into that and actually it was for the people that kind of the reason or the, I guess how coming back to how we acquired this property it was the same thing um, where the people that, um, basically brought it to us. They had, were having trouble with the property and that's how we ended up with it. But, um, so this was a two, uh, 10 unit property, um, that we came across just a small apartment, um, building, um, here in Indianapolis. And, um, basically what happened with it, the way that we came across it, a wholesaler brought it to us because he had a deal wrapped up. It was ready to go. Um, and basically like right before it was supposed to close, the buyer fell out. So when that happens, that can happen. That happens a lot. It happens a little too much, unfortunately. Um, that's why some of that follow-up stuff is always important to make sure you're following up, make sure everything's good to go. So when you get close to that closing table, you know what's going to happen or you know you need to find another buyer for it. Um, that was the case here. They realized like, hey, this isn't going to happen. This isn't going to work. Um, so they came to us. Um, we, we do take down properties. We buy every property that we, that we come across. And uh, that's what happened here. They said, hey, would you guys be interested in doing this one? We're kind of in a tough, tough spot. Um, we said, yeah, let's take it down. So this was a 10 unit apartment that we, that we bought. Um, and the wholesaler brought it to us. They ended up making some pretty good money on the backside as well, or on the front side as well on this deal for him. Um, so that was great. Um, but, uh, Randy, Randy, this was really like one of the first times that we dealt with an apartment unit or apartment building like this size. Usually we've, we've done up to like six, some eight here or there, you know, like very yeah. sparingly. We like to really just stay like three and down. So some yeah. you know, single families duplexes, triplexes. We did this one and we're like, Hey, let's, let's crank it up. We actually have another one right now that we're selling. It's a nine unit and things and we're, we're looking to get some more. Um, yeah. but this was one that we are like, we are kind of a little bit out of our element, but we wanted to take on that challenge. It was the right price point for us. Um, we mm -hmm. thought it was a great deal. It was a great property, great area and stuff like that. So, so we came across the buy part was, was super easy for us where we came, came into it and said, Hey, this is, yep. The, like I said, they brought it right to us. Um, you know, ribbon tied around it, all we had to do is sign the papers and close on it. So that part was super, super easy. Um, Randy, why don't you get into a little bit of kind of what happened after we bought it and how that, that process went of selling it. Yeah, like you said, uh, this was something new for us. So we were, <laughs> the whole team was super excited to, you know, finally get a, um, a 10 plus on our, <laughs> under our belt. So uh, this was, I was a little different because, um, you know, buildings like this are hard to come by in Indianapolis or like any small market like ours anywhere. So once you have a deal like this, your phone and email are going to blow up with like actual real buyers who are interested in this, but also people who just want to hear the ins and outs of this deal because they're curious because they don't come across something like this all the time. So the, I think the toughest part on my end was kind of weeding out those people, like trying to focus on, okay, who's actually going to take this, this deal down and, um, you know, try to weed out the people who just want to go see it. Um, and, and other wholesalers, things like that, because that can get messy. But um, so it was, it, was, it was a bunch of, you know, fielding calls on my end and uh, got, a, got a lot of interest. And um, luckily, one, one of our really good buddies um, who buy from us, you know, throughout the year, he was actually able to pick this property up. And, and I think it really helped him boost his, his, his portfolio here in Indy and really kind of, uh, he kind of just took off from that point. So. Um, you know, deal wise, it was, it was pretty straightforward. Um, things kind of different versus the normal wholesale than doing this deal was, you know, you gotta, you gotta have copies of financials and leases. Uh, there's multiple leases there, try to get pictures of every unit. So that's a little challenging, but, um, you know, if you kind of coordinate that with the property manager and the tenants there, it typically goes smoothly, but, um, overall it's a fun deal. We got to help out, you know, a buyer that works with us, um, pretty regularly. And he's happy, we're happy. And uh, I think since that deal, we're, we're always looking for more properties like that now. <laughs> like bring, I said, we've got, bring we've got them on right now. <laughs> yeah, so bring them on. Um, no, but it's really fun. And I know one of the biggest things I saw like from the wholesale standpoint of 
you know, a lot of single families, you can say like, you can put on there like, Hey, no inspection or, you know, no inspections and things like that. And you'll still get people that will take them down and, and still buy them. That's no problem. When you're dealing with a multi-unit, like the, you want your investors to in, inspect it. Like they, yeah. they're going to want inspections. You're going to want them to, to make sure that they are happy with their investment of, of going with, of doing that. Because if it, if it works out great, the next time you have one, you know exactly who to go to and stuff. So make sure that you're kind of taking care of that. But that was one of the biggest differences I knew. We had to make sure that we like, you know, found time for them to do inspections and things like that yeah. for a couple of different people that were, that were looking to do it. So, yeah. Plus, I, I mean, you can't, you can't have, you can't have four or five people walking through that property in a week like you could with a single family house, just because there's too many people involved with the tenants and the property manager there. Like they're, they're going to go nuts. So you really have to do my, I have to do my due diligence on the front end of the dispo to make sure I'm getting a qualified buyer in first, who's not going to waste anyone's time. Right. Um, Cause there were tons of people, like I said, Hey, can I go take a look at this? I'm like, you can't just go, <laughs> we got to talk first and make sure that this is going to be a deal that you actually want. So uh, yeah, just communications key as always when it's come, coming to deals like that. Yeah. little tip too. Something that always works out for us whenever we're dealing with maybe a tenant or multiple tenants and stuff like that, we always like to do, if we're bothering them like more than like two or three times, we like to give them a gift card, like a Kroger gift card, McDonald's gift card, something like that, just to help us out for being cooperative and, and things like that. So that always goes a long way. And they're always like, Oh yeah, feel free to come by. And it's a great way to build rapport and relationships too, by figuring out like, Hey, what fast food restaurant do you like? Or where do you grocery shop? Those types of things. So it's a little tips, but that's what we got for today's Throwback Thursday. So thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, I think this wraps it up for the month of June for Randy and I doing this. We're going to kind of switch these up each month. And I think it's going to be me and Ronnie next time. So we'll get a little, little different feel, a little different aspect and things like that here. We'll, we'll talk about Randy and how he messed up some deals on the buy side. <laughs> um, no, so we'll see you guys uh, next week on another Throwback Thursday. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.